Tech Revision with Mrs. Swanee Pooh. <laughs> Hi everyone, this video is going to cover the topic of workshop and industrial material tests. Those, these are tests that are carried out on materials to establish their toughness, their hardness, their malleability, and they are done quite differently if they are done in a workshop in contrast to industrially. So we're going to go through first how they're carried out in the workshop. So a little bit of a refresher for you, because usually we do this as a theory lesson, um, kind of in year 12, where you are asked to carry out some tests. So if we think about these four here to begin with, in a workshop environment, so obviously you're more limited with the uh, equipment that you've got to do these tests, how would you test toughness? How would you test hardness? How do you test tensile strength and how do you test malleability and ductility so you might want to pause here and see if you can remember how those are tested so we're going to go through each one so toughness is this so toughness is basically clamping your little sample into a vice and hitting it with a hammer it's about as complex as that so toughness is all about um, being able to withstand a sudden impact it may bend it may deform but it won't uh, fracture. So I often compare toughness to almost like a, a chili steak. If a steak is tough, you can bend it and squash it, but you can't get through it. Um, so to test toughness in a workshop, you whack it with a hammer. Always good, nice stress reliever. Right, to test hardness. Oops, I've gone too far there, but never mind. Ignore that one. Uh, to test hardness is this one. So you use a center punch. Make sure you try and remember that uh, term, a centre punch. You use a hammer, a ball peen hammer, that's just this type of hammer. And what you do is try and exert the same amount of force to make a scratch or a dent in the material. See how deep the dent is, and that corresponds to how uh, hard the material is. Tensile strength is this one here. If you imagine this is like a strip of plastic, you'd have a clamp at the top, you'd have some kind of weight at the bottom, and then however much this uh, stretches by is its tensile strength. Um, this little area in the middle here, quite interestingly, this is called necking, when the material kind of goes in a little bit like that as it stretches. It's called necking and it usually happens just before the material uh, breaks. Malleability and ductility, kind of similar to the toughness, but you take your material, you bend it at, a, at like a 90 degree, and you do kind of a visual inspection inspection of the top if there are any cracks or um, kind of you know damage to this area because this is testing tension but also the, the ability to be stretched out into a wire which is ductility and the inside here if there's any um, cracks or anything like that that is testing compression so that gives you an idea of uh, malleability so this test shows you both uh, ductility across the top around here and compression in the uh, underneath. Right, the next set of tests are these three here and these are really, really simple. Conductivity, you basically attached like a multimeter, which I'm sure you've done loads in science before. You attach it to one end to the other and you measure the resistance. Obviously, the higher the resistance, the less conductive the material is. It's about as easy as that. Corrosion resistance, basically put it outside in an area exposed to the effects of weather and leave it for a set amount of time. See what, and then you would do a visual inspection, see if any rust or corrosion has appeared on the sample. And the last one, um, that's pretty much what I just said. The last one is this one, which is thermal conductivity. And again, super, super easy. You've got a, a heat source at one side, um, heat it up, see how long it takes to travel to the other end, time it. The shorter the time it takes, um, the higher the thermal conductivity of the material. So if that was a piece of metal, you'd heat it here, but it would probably heat up quite quickly here because metal is very conductive. OK, so that was just a quick reminder about how these tests are done in a workshop. What we're now going to talk about is how tests are done in an industrial setting. So in a big uh, kind of factory professional setting, you're not going to be getting materials out and whacking them with hammers. You're going to do it in a much more um, kind of controlled and measured way. 
Um, but firstly, I want to talk about the different types of testing that can be done on products. So this is a really good reminder of quality uh, control checks that can happen during the manufacturing process. So you've got two types of testing you can do. You've got destructive testing and you've got non-destructive testing. So destructive testing is any procedure which obviously results in the thing that you're testing being destroyed. So it would be suitable for a production line where many products are being made uh, because maybe one out of a thousand being destroyed is not a big deal and it's worth it to make sure that the quality of the batch is consistent. Um, so this could be done on a product like a car brake disc when they're being made huge amounts at a time. OK, it wouldn't be suitable if you were making small batches or like a one off, because obviously destroying it, it's extremely expensive and um, is going to be counter kind of counterproductive to your uh, to your business. So that's where non destructive testing might be better. This obviously does not result in any damage to the test piece. It's done in a slightly different way. But it's more suitable for things like one-off components, such as say you're making a, a steel turbine for an aircraft carrier. You're not going to spend weeks or days making that product and then take it off the production line and destroy it just to see if it's OK. Um, you are obviously going to do some kind of non-destructive tests uh, and we're going to explain what those are later. You could also, before you even manufacture the product, you could do a set of other types of tests. And these are, you could do things like FEA, so finite element analysis, where you could actually use CAD to simulate forces on the CAD model, identify where there might be issues. If the product was going to be um, exposed to uh, liquids or water or something like that, um, you could do CFD, which is computational fluid dynamics. That can also be used for things that have been injection molded to see how well the uh, liquid plastic is going to flow around the mold. So there are also other types of testing that you can do. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have a look at the different types of industrial testing and how they differ from the workshop uh, variety. Well, before that, even, we're going to very, very quickly talk about why it's important to make the test fair. So this reminds me of like primary school science. Obviously, I've seen a question like this before in the exam, actually. Um, whenever you're doing any kind of test, you need to make sure that you're using the same size of material for each test. Make sure that the conditions are the same. So it's not too hot in the environment, it's not too cold. That can have a big impact. You're going to use the same testing equipment and the same technique. So the same type of force and the position of the force uh, on each of the tests. And if it's a workshop test, especially, you're going to make sure that one person is taking all of the test measurements. It just helps to eradicate any slight changes in the data that's collected. So now we're going to talk about industrial tests. So industrial tests, in contrast to a workshop, are obviously carried out in a lab um, with specific testing machinery that's built to just do that test. And again, you would have standardised test pieces of material. So when you've done the test in the workshop before, it's very likely that you probably didn't ensure that all of the little samples were exactly the same size. Um, they may have differed slightly, different thicknesses, different uh, shapes. But in this environment, they need to be all exactly the same size. So the different types of tests, again, these are the ones we're going to go through. Um, these three are probably the most important ones. Uh, there's very, very specific tests for these in industry. I'm going to talk a little bit more about non-destructive testing and then a little bit about these last three here. So this is the first one we're going to very, very quickly talk about. This is how tensile strength is tested in industry. And you can see it's very similar in that it's got a clamp at the top and a clamp at the bottom. And basically the material is put between here and then forces stretch the material apart. So a standard test piece is held in a clamp at each end. Um, the piece is then put under tension, it's stretched, um, and it basically allows you to, to measure um, how much it, it uh, like travels, if it's got any stretch, things like yield. Uh, any of you physics people, this is sort of like what you might use for like stress and strain and all that sort of stuff. Um, it reveals its elastic limit, its yield point, so when it starts to stretch. And the final breaking point, which is after necking. So that thing I talked about earlier, where a material can kind of go like this. 
like that and it kind of goes and then it oh, breaks okay so this machine is called a tensometer quite easy to remember because it's got almost got like tensile in it so tensometer and it's as easy as this so i'm going to show you a short clip now from a youtube video which is not very exciting but it shows you how the machine looks and how it works just go oh, any day now oh go on son oh god look at that stretch oh, oh. look at it stretching Oh! Oh! Good lord! <laughs> My heart jumped! <laughs> Flip! Lovely clean break. Oh. 157.4 <laughs> thousand pounds. Go on, my heart. Alright, let's see what that looks like. Whoa! Whoa! It gets dark like a cloud of mist. Whoa. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> That's amazing! The best way to clean a steel bar is to break it in half. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no gubbins left on it after that. <laughs> oh, and then all the stuff from above came down later. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Okay, the next one I want to talk about is this test is for toughness and it's called the IZOD impact test. And this is this is basically a really um, much more controlled way of testing toughness in that basically you have your test piece here and the test piece, if you imagine it, would have a little notch in it like this. So imagine that is basically clamped here. This pendulum or is this is this is almost like the hammer. Yeah, this pendulum is held at this point here, the starting position. It's let go and it swings through and it hits the specimen and the specimen will break. OK, now, depending on how tough this material is, it depends on how far this swings afterwards. So the the pendulum will absorb some of the um, will absorb the kind of impact of the specimen. And if that's a really tough material, the pendulum may not travel too far. If the material is not very tough, the pendulum might travel all the way up here, for example. OK, so the basically how far the pendulum swings after the sample shows you what the toughness of the material is because depending on how much impact it's absorbed how much force it's absorbed it's not quite the right word but you know what i mean um that gives you how tough the material is so the energy absorbed by the test piece is calculated and the measurement is taken from how far the pendulum swings afterwards now i'm going to show you a very quick uh, little video this is the best video i could find online it's literally two very strange ladies, um, but it just shows you how the machine works. Okay. Um, you'll notice that on the IZOD testing machine that it starts, the zero point starts further back than for the shark attention test, which is kind of interesting. So I would just load this. Carefully. Them, very carefully. <laughs> put them in the notch. You set it in so that it is vertically. It's vertical and it will hit directly in the middle so that the weight is distributed either. Okay. And then we release the pendulum. Okay. The foot pounds per inch at the knots were 10 pounds. So the foot pounds per square inch were was 100 pounds. Right, hardness. This is how they test hardness in, uh, in industry. So this one's interesting, hardness. There are three different tests that can be done um, and they all have slightly different ways of being carried out. I suggest that you learn one of these really well. So the Rockwell is one of them, the Brunel or the Vickers pyramid test, okay? So, Basically, all of these tests involve, just like when you had the center punch and the hammer, 
They all involve a load being applied and the size of the indent is measured to determine the hardness of the material. The smaller the indentation, the harder the material. OK, so we're going to go through um, each of these. The first one being the Rockwell test. So the Rockwell test here, if you imagine there is a, a machine here that is pushing this little diamond indenter into the surface. So basically, the first step is the indenter is pushed a little bit into the surface of the material. It took me a while to realise why they did that. They, they do that because the surface of the material here may be slightly uneven under a microscope uh, or, you know, looking very, very closely to it. And by applying a little bit of a force to begin with to get to a reference point, it makes sure that the test has a kind of like a consistent line to measure from rather than it, you know, if it went in here, it might go slightly deeper. If it went in here, it might go slightly shallower. I hope that makes sense. So the first thing it does is it pushes in a little bit into the material. Then what it does is it does the, the, the actual push down into, into the material. And then that is the distance that is measured. That's the measurement that is used to determine the hardness of this material. OK, um, I've got a, a video again. It's about a two minute video, so bear with it. It also has some physics, mathsy stuff in it, which you do not need. Don't worry. But the bit at the end specifically um, tells you how the process is done. And I would say that this is a really good one for you to learn. Let's take a look at how the test is carried out in practice. The tester selects the conical diamond indenter and installs it in the testing machine. Then he picks up the gear wheel and puts it on the support table. After rotating the microscope lens to its vertical position, he can adjust his test piece. As soon as a focused image can be seen on the screen, the surface of the test piece is in the correct height. The test can start. In modern testing machines, the Rockwell hardness test is fully automated. That's why the Rockwell hardness test is used so often in automated production lines. That's it. The Rockwell hardness of our gear wheel is 55 HRC. This result is displayed on the screen. Right, I'm going to go through the next two quite quickly. Um, the Brunel test is, is quite similar, but the difference being that they use a little ball bearing um, that is pushed into the surface of the material. Um, the diameter of the indent is measured. So you can see the diameter there is measured and that gives you a reading which helps you determine the hardness of the material. This one's a little bit more simplified. Um, and is probably a little bit lower cost to carry out in contrast to the um, Rockwell test, which is more automated. This one may be a little bit more inexpensive. And the final one we're going to quickly talk about is called the Vickers Pyramid Test. Now, the one about th this one is a good one to remember because it's used for very hard materials. So um, things like maybe tungsten or something like that. This one uses a square base pyramid uh, indenter. It's diamond again, being one of the hardest materials that you can get. And the, 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 way, the, re the reason that this is used on hard materials is the, the indent is actually measured with a microscope. So it's absolutely tiny little indent that it creates is measured uh, with a microscope, hence why it's done on just the hardest uh, materials. OK, last couple of things to quickly go through. Uh, this is quite good. Again, if you've got this far with me, well done. Uh, this is a good quality control uh, stuff to talk about here. So non-destructive testing, we mentioned briefly at the beginning, really important to do if you want to make sure that the product you're looking at is not destroyed uh, during the testing process. So if it's like a high cost, expensive product, you don't want to be smacking it with um, any kind of equipment to make sure it's, you know, it's not going to break. So this is carried out on products rather than material samples. And non-destructive testing is used to find defects in the material. So this is where you think a little bit more medical in a way, because it uses like ultrasound, ultrasonic waves uh, are kind of pulsed into the material 
and that can detect if there is any inconsistency in the material. There could be cracks, there could be areas of air, for example, if you've cast something out of metal, there could be air voids inside that you can't see from the surface. So an ultrasonic uh, scan would help you identify those. And believe it or not, you can use X-ray as well. And the image that's uh, projected can identify uh, things like little hairline cracks that are through the material. Uh, it could be little voids again, little, little areas of uh, problems that could potentially cause uh, a major fault or a, a failing of the product uh, in the future. Things like turbine blades or aircraft parts. Non-destructive testing is used to see, uh, are there any faults in there that we can't see from the surface? Right, I'm gonna whiz through this really, really quick. Couple of other tests, uh, malleability and ductility. It's basically just like a bend test. You can see on this quite a good picture here actually that the test piece is kind of secured or, or mounted between these two posts. You've then got a, a force that's been exerted in the middle. And just like the malleability and ductility test in the workshop where you bend it like this kind of thing and you have ductility across the top and compression, uh, cracks on the outside, so round here, indicate the level of ductility. Cracks on the inside indicate the level of malleability. Right, very quickly again, these are all very similar to how they would be done in the workshop. Only difference is for corrosion, the environmental effects are simulated in a lab, um, in a simulated weather environment left for a set length of time, so very similar. Electrical conductivity is the same as a workshop test. You measure the resistance between two points with a multimeter and thermal conductivity is exactly the same. Uh, except it might use something like heat flow sensors placed on the surface of the material um, and the temperature is increased at a controlled rate. So it's very similar to how that would be done uh, in a workshop environment. Right, I hope that was useful. That covers workshop tests and industrial testing, as well as a bit of quality control stuff in there. So um, I'll see you on the next video.